So currently I'm working on the script for a kind of massive series, but before I get ready for that, I feel like I need to take an episode and go over one of the most basic but confusing statistics in Warframe. Multi-shot. Yeah, I know, it's basically one of the most used stats in the game, and some form of it is probably on every single gun in your arsenal, but that doesn't really stop it from being kind of an unusual stat in a lot of ways, and one that if you fully understand can cause you to make some pretty important tweaks to your builds. So while the next series I'm going to do is still fairly far out, let's go ahead and take an episode and cover this strange but vile mechanic. Now on the surface, Multi-Shot's a really simple stat. Every time you fire a bullet, you also have a percent chance to fire at least one free additional shot based on your total multi-shot. So if you've got just split chamber on, you'll fire two bullets on 90% of your shots, effectively doubling your damage 90% of the time. And if you throw vigilante armaments on top of that to get up to 150% multi-shot, you will have one guaranteed extra round and a 50% chance of firing a third one. And that same basic system works for any level of multi-shot that you can achieve, so if you manage to get your hands on a really nice ribbon and are running around with 410% multi-shot, you'll be firing four extra blasts on every shot and have a 10% chance of shooting a fifth. So that's nice, extra damage is always welcome, and multi-shot mods usually come with a large amount of that stat. However, while the core of multi-shot is pretty simple, this stat just has some really bizarre aspects to it that aren't shown well in-game at all, and that can seriously change how you build. For instance, one of the usual side perks to multi-shot is that since you are firing out more hits, you will naturally get a higher percent chance of applying at least one of whatever status effect is on your weapon. However, this is not how beam weapons work with the stat. For them, multi-shot is simply simulated instead of actually performed, which means that for beams, multi-shot is literally only a damage amplification. It does not add any additional hits when used with beam weapons. If you use a Phantasma with 100% status chance and build for corrosive, you will strip a level 160 Bombard's armor in the exact same amount of time whether or not you have the Hell's Chamber mod equipped. This doesn't mean you shouldn't be running the mod, as a 120% damage boost is pretty much never going to be unwelcome, but yes, if you happen to run into a Riven for a beam weapon or are thinking about using Vigilante Armaments, you should be aware that Multi-Shot is going to be somewhat less exciting for beams than it is on any other class of weapons. And there's another thing about certain weapons in Multi-Shot that's not super obvious, and well, that's basically everything about weapons with some form of what you could call base Multi-Shot. This includes pretty much everything that is listed as a shotgun except for the Astilla and Archiplasmor, as well as all shotgun secondaries, all multi-beam lasers, Evar's Artemis Bow, the Corvus, the Cernos Prime, the Ballistica Prime's on charge fire, and the Zara Euphona Prime and Fusilize alternate fire modes. All of these weapons all fire multiple bullets at the same time, but unsurprisingly don't gain just a single additional one from 100% multi-shot. Instead, however many shots they normally fire counts as sort of a base multi-shot, and then that base multi-shot is increased by whatever your bonus multi-shot is. So if you've got a weapon that fires 10 shots for blast, and you are running with a 120% multi-shot mod, you'll be firing 22 separate pellets every time you pull the trigger. Furthermore, multi-shot is actually a much more reliable damage source on weapons with base multi-shot than it is normally, as it only changes the number of bullets fired if the number of pellets it adds in aren't a perfectly rounded number. Yeah, this sounds kind of complicated, but in practice it's far, far more simple than it sounds. To give you an example, let's take the Tsar, which has a base multi-shot of just 1 in its cannon mode and 10 in its barrage mode. If you give it split chamber, its cannon mode will fire one shot 10% of the time and two shots 90% of the time. However, since 90% of the barrage mode's 10 pellets is just 9, and that is a perfectly rounded number, if you've got split chamber equipped, you will always be firing 19 bullets when using that barrage mode. So that's the basics of how multi-shot works. It's a bit complicated sounding, but for the most part you don't ever actually need to calculate anything, and all you really need to take away from that first section of this video is that multi-shot adds more hits in and so boosts your damage by whatever percentage of multi-shot you've got, Beam weapons are weird and only gain damage instead of extra hits with multi-shot, the stat is a more reliable damage boost on weapons with lots of hits, and that weapons with lots of hits gain a lot more hits when using multi-shot mods. However, while that is the basics and covers most of the really simple stuff, 
There are some really weird and important things to know about with how multi-shot works when paired with status chance crit and the hunter munitions mod. You see, assuming that you've used any multi-shot mod at all, you have probably noticed that it increases your listed status chance and supposedly does not affect your critical hit chance. However, multi-shot actually affects both stats in identical ways, but for some reason Digital Extremes has chosen to only list one half of the two numbers you might want to know about for your status and crit chances on weapons with multi-shot. What I mean by this is that the listed crit chance is each individual bullet's chance of landing a critical hit, and the status chance you see in the arsenal is simply the total chance per blast of applying at least one status effect of some variety. And that is an extremely important distinction to be aware of when you talk about quite a few weapons, most notably shotguns and anything else that has some kind of base multi-shot. Let's use the Vacor Heck as an example. On the surface, this thing looks like it is perfectly balanced, with a 25% chance to crit and a 25% status chance. However, while the chance to land a crit works exactly as you would expect, and each bullet will crit 25% of the time, since the Vacor Hack fires 7 pellets and the 25% status chance is your chance of getting a single status effect, the actual individual chance of your bullets landing a proc is closer to around 4% per hit. Yeah, that's kind of a massive difference from what it's showing, and despite the listed numbers going up, adding more multi-shot will not increase each individual hit's status chance in any way. This is why, even if you toss all four status mods in Hell's Chamber on the heck, it won't be particularly amazing at stacking on Corrosive, despite it listing the total status chance as 98.5% and it firing 15 or 16 bullets or blast, each individual bullet will still only have around a 12% or so chance of proccing an effect on each hit. This is why, unless you can get to 100% status chance, which yes, I will talk about in a minute, you will generally find that effects that don't need to stack, such as Viral, tend to be far more reliable on these types of weapons than things like Corrosive, Gas, and Slash. And speaking of Slash, let's swap to Crit for a moment and cover how that stat sort of has the opposite issue with Multishot. You see, the critical chance listed is each individual hit's chance to be a crit, and while that is significantly better for figuring out your average damage than status chances for discovering your actual chance to apply status, there's one specific reason why you might want to generally figure out how this all works with all the shots you're firing. You see, hunter munitions can often end up being one of the best ways for a slow firing weapon to get past extremely high levels of armor. And while crit chance can boost your hunter munitions chance up to 30%, if you are hitting the enemy multiple times per shot, you can actually have a much higher chance of getting at least one hunter munitions proc per shot and sometimes significantly more. To once again use the Vacor Hack as an example, with just Blunderbuss on, its critical chance is boosted to 47.5%, which means that every bullet it fires has a 14% chance of applying hunter munitions. And since it fires around 15 bullets per blast with Hell's Chamber on, this means that it'll actually have closer to a 90% chance of applying at least 100 munitions proc every single time it fires. Now, for shotguns, all this usually means is that they are just very reliable with hunter munitions, but unless you get a fantastic crit-based ribbon, it really isn't something you need to worry too much about. Most of them don't actually have the ability to get their crit up all that high, and Hell's Chamber is already an amazing multi-shot mod that they will already be running, so generally they will want to be prioritizing crit more than multi-shot on any ribbons that you get for them. However, things become a bit more interesting when you've got a weapon that is close to that 100% crit chance, because after you cross that point you will be unable to increase your hunter munitions chance through crit. This means that on certain crit monsters like the Lens and the Ruko Prime, you actually get the interesting choice of either stacking more critical chance to take advantage of more raw damage, or boosting your multi-shot value so that you will get more bleed procs on average and so get more attacks that bypass the enemy's armor. Which one is going to be better is going to depend on your weapon, build, any ribbons that you've got, and what you're planning on using against, but this is still something you might want to keep in mind when messing with hunter munitions on any weapon that has a ton of crit. So that's the last thing I have to say about critical chance and multi-shot, but before I end the video, let's swap back to status and talk about what exactly happens when you get to 100% status chance on weapons with lots of base multi-shot. And actually, there's a few things I need to explain here. First, you're only truly at 100% status chance when you are listed as having that when no multi-shot mods are equipped on your weapon. 
Even if you have your gun listed as being at 100% status chance, if you take off your multi-shot mods and see that you're only actually at 99.9%, you are still not going to count as being at 100% even after you toss those multi-shot mods back on. Also, your base multi-shot is not a problem for calculating if you are at 100% status or not, you only need to worry about the bonuses from your mods. I know that this doesn't exactly make the most sense, but it's simply how Warframe calculates things, and you should be happy about it as it actually tends to lead to something pretty powerful. You see, on some weapons, getting to 100% status chance can be kind of amazing, and this is because the developers decide to be extremely generous to anyone who actually reaches that point. Instead of continuing to split your status chance between all of your weapon's pellets, once you reach that 100% status marker, every single instance of damage you do with that weapon will suddenly jump to having a 100% chance to proc an effect. It doesn't matter whether you're running a single hit weapon or something that lands 50 hits per blast, every hit will always proc. And this is huge for any weapon that has some form of base multi-shot built into it. For instance, Let's once again go back to the Vakor Heck, which I have intentionally set up a really bad build for by giving it just Hell's Chamber, Prime Charge Shot, all four status mods, and the newly released Modus setup. This means that the weapon fires 15 or 16 bullets per shot, is weighted towards corrosive, has a 98.5% status chance normally, and has a 100% status chance after I do a double jump. And yes, if I don't jump, even if I'm facing an incredibly tanky level 160 Bombard, I won't be able to reliably strip his armor before I kill him, which will generally be after about 2 or 3 whole magazines, or 16 to 24 shots. This means that I will have had around 256 to 360 chances to proc corrosive, and yet still have not actually stripped his armor despite how high my status chance appears to be. But if I proc modus set up first, and so boost my status chance up to 100%, his armor will be completely stripped after just around 6 blasts, aka 96 hits. Now, while that setup is a gimmicky build, you simply because I'd already been talking about that weapon as an example throughout the rest of this video, and I don't actually ever suggest going for 100% status chance on the Vakor heck, it does showcase just how huge an effect you can get from reaching 100% status chance on guns with the ability to apply lots of procs with a single shot. By boosting my status chance by that supposedly small 1.5%, I actually increase my ability to strip armor and apply status effects by over 4 times. And while not every weapon with base multi-shot should be set up for 100% status, and ones that are single hit very rarely want to be reaching that point even if they stack multi-shot, if you have the right weapon set up for 100% status, it can actually be absolutely incredible. A Corrosive Phage can delete a level 160 Bombard in about 2 seconds, a Viral Tigris can one-shot pretty much anything thanks to its massive built-in bleed procs, and a 100% status comb will shred anything that you might ever put in front of it thanks to it proccing roughly 200 slash and corrosive procs every single second when at full spool. So yeah, if you can get to 100% status on a multi-shot heavy weapon, it can be an absolute game changer, and you should at least try this out on every weapon that has both good base multi-shot and the ability to reach 100% status chance. And I think that covers everything you might need to know about multi-shot. I know everyone already uses it on basically everything that they've got, and that a lot of people already understand most of how this thing works, but it's still an incredibly weird stat, one that changes how it works depending on whether it's used with single hit beam or multi hit weapons, and that interacts with crit and status in some really unusual ways. So while some of you might have already known everything that I covered today, I still felt a video like this had to come out before I got ready to release my next weapon series, especially since it's going to be covering a class of weapons that can actually benefit from every single thing I covered in this video. So. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you learned anything leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you later. Farewell.